on guys welcome back to the stay weird in podcast it's 2023 a new year but i'm still joining my co-host the legend himself sugar how are you doing man happy new year man it's, it's been a while it's been a sec it's the first week of jan and we've got a big pay-per-view so let's go let's go let's go straight into it but with that being said you're right big week javante davis headlining um the short time card with the pbc card sorry um what did you make of this? Because there was a lot of, not, I'm not going to say outrage, but what happened with the timing? Because we were just talking off air. Let's just go with that as well. The fact that Showtime themselves had Tank coming out at one o'clock in America. It was at six o'clock here. How, what, how did that happen? Like We were talking about the UFC as well, and it just went so bad there as well. Let's just start with the timings as well. It is ridiculous, man. Like, I get it. You're trying to make it a larger than life event, etc., etc. But it's just a piss take. And like you were saying, we're talking about the UFC. And one thing I always give UFC credit for is great production and great timing. Like, they don't have as much, like, big intermissions in between fights. Especially with boxing, it's like, if you, especially if it's a 12-rounder, that's 36 minutes. Add in the added rounds as well. So then it's like you've got so much time. So you basically every fight takes up at least an hour, uh, you know, putting entrances and announcing and as well. And it's just like there's no reason why it should take this long for a fight. Even like you said, I saw people in the East Coast of America complaining because they're saying 1 a.m. for an entrance walk is taking a piss. I don't know. Did they do the um, anthem as well? So I can't That's recall right. the answer because I was watching basketball at the time. But yes. I'll say this, I'll say this. Um, Tank had a double entrance. So he had a first song where they were performing and I was like, yo, he's going to come out. Then they stopped. Then he had another song and that's when he came and I was like... You know what I mean? But if you're going to do this year, then make it a shorter card then. Yeah. Make it a shorter card. Like, this is... I don't know how people in America don't complain about this this is ridiculous like especially i'm all here for the theatrics but it's just like there needs to be balance that's why i give eddie hearn credit because i think eddie hearn even said he went to a ufc event and he saw the sequencing and production and he realized oh wow like we could do that apply it to boxing and that you can still have the theatrics that maybe the ufc doesn't allow the fighters to have but it doesn't need to be such a stretched out show you can still have the theatrics and still have decent sequencing. And I don't even think Matchroom don't even always do the national anthem because I'm sure they're probably just like, listen, man, people just want to see the fight. We get it. It's a big show, but certain times it's just like, let's go straight into the fights. It's ridiculous. But let's, you know talk, what? let's go into the fights, man. I was going to say before we actually get, do you know what I hate when, and this is not on anybody, not on the fights, when you got mm. um, the fight in US, and this is mainly like with Canelo. You got the Mexican fighter being Canelo, then you got yeah. some, another. So we got three anthems we have to get through before anything. That, to- listen, that fight, that whole like because we're fighting in the US, we're going to do the national anthem. That stinks, man. Man, get that the f out of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> listen, if I don't know if there's if Canelo was, I know he's probably going to face John Ryder here, but if Canelo was to face. I don't know, Booby Andrade or something, yeah, which is not happening. I'm sorry, side note, we were talking about this before. That fight stank, that they be a 168 stank. I'm not trying to see him against Canelo. Get out of the F out of it, boot it away. Anywho, if Boo Boo was to face Canelo in the UK, for example, I don't need to hear the UK national anthem. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't need to hear it. Just give me Canelo's Mexico, Andrade's America, and get the fight going. Like, I guess they're just overly patriotic. But sometimes it's just like, get a grip and move on, man. But let's just talk about this fight as well. Um, going into the fight, I think a lot of people saw Tank as the big favorite, and he kind of lived up to it. It was a, I'm gonna, it was a stool stoppage, I call it, because he mm. didn't get up from at the start of the Nazareth Hector Hector Garcia. What what do you make about Tank always going into these fights at 135, being the smaller guy, but always having the bigger punching power and eventually it's coming through? Because it was a bit of a slow start, but then it came mm-hmm. to like the fourth and the fifth and it picked up and you could see that his power was showing. And then in the eighth, where I think at the start of the ninth, Hector says, 
I can't see him. Uh, no so, mess. yeah. So what what do you make about Tank always going into these fights? Predominantly going to be the smaller guy, but then coming out with this punching power and then overbearing his opponents. It's funny because I think it's just his build, isn't it? He's like, like the many stupid. people said, the might yeah, super stocky Mike Tyson of the lightweight division. And it's funny because it's like if you tell him to go to one thirty, his body is like he's way too dense. Yeah, he's filled out where yeah. he's filled out. Like, so... Down to one thirty would kill him. Even one thirty five is a struggle, but then one forty mm. is just like he could probably make one forty. But that's when it's like the size of some of the people at one forty would dwarf him. So one thirty five is like I guess he just has to be disciplined and you know, not ballooning weight too much. But, yeah, he's always going to be the smaller guy. Funnily enough, it's like Garcia was a champ- is a champion at 130 and then he dwarfed him as well. But it is where it is. You just got to adapt to your style. He's, he knows how to fight towards his build. And he does that in a lot of fights. Like, he takes his time. He doesn't just unload the clip from the get-go. He takes time to process the opponent, feel them out, and then goes to break them down throughout the whole fight through the rest of the fight, shall I say. I want to get your view on one thing that irritates me. So mm-hmm. this fight was classed as a title fight. The WBA regular lightweight title. However, they, they it's, won't say it's that. nasty, man. We know, uh, we know uh, um, Devin Haney's the undisputed, undisputed champion. Undisputed, yeah. How, how do you feel about this? Because it irritates me. Because if, if I'm trying to explain to somebody... That no, he's a super champion. He's the regular champion. Yeah. You're like, wait, so Tank isn't a world champion. How do you explain this to people that Davis isn't officially the world champion, even though he is technically holding a title belt by the commission itself? You tell people you like belts, right? Yep. It's good marketing, right? Yep. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's just marketing. It's literally. Guess what? In order to tank is a big name, but in order to make him look bigger, let's just put a belt on him. Because obviously we can't deny that he brings in a lot of casual fans. So you're gonna have the casual fans that seeing a belt being put on him, and they're just like, oh, he's a world champ. And they're not gonna care any less. Obviously, the people that know how they're probably rolling their eyes every single time they see that belt because they're just like get a grip. But I can't blame the promoters for doing that because you want to make him look like some for, somewhat of a champion. I'm sure, no, nah, this would be nasty. If Garcia comes out, imagine if Garcia comes out with his secondary WBC belt that he got. <laughs> that would be some of the nastiest stuff I've ever seen. Hopefully both of them in the next fight. I think it's going to be catch for anyway. I don't think neither of them should be carrying a belt. And I don't want to hear neither of them saying they're world champion this or that or the third. Just call it a big name fight. Is where it's a big celebrity fight. But do you know what's even funnier? It's seeing people cuss Devin Haney, which is weird to me. It's like this guy's literally, if not the youngest, one of the youngest undisputed champions ever. I and people... He, I think, he might be the second youngest, I want to say. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Either way, is like this guy has done an incredible feat. He done it twice by beating, you know, someone in the home ground in George Cambosis in Australia in front of big crowds. I get he doesn't, you know, set out big in where he's from. I think he's from the Bay Area, so Oakland. I don't know. Maybe he needs to have a homecoming and make it a big thing. Maybe the Lomachenko fight might do that for him. He's not a big commercial guy, but the way people try to go and like reduce what Devin Haney's done just to big up Tank, I'm like, that is so weird. You can give both of them credit. Give Tank credit for becoming the big commercial star that he is, and then give Devin Haney credit for becoming a big boxing star that he is. And his po- I'm sure his pockets ain't hurting either. So, yeah, it's just that whole secondary belt thing, though, is it's just weird, but I get it. Casuals are tuning in. They want to see someone who's a champion. Yeah. Technically, they're not lying. They're just not telling you what type of champion he is. So, I, like I said, I don't call Tank a world champion. It's just, if people want to, they can. But in my eyes, he's not. He's what not. I will say, though, is just on the ring walk itself, him coming out the way he does, he looks like he, you know, that showcase of a star. 
Yeah. You can look at you like, you know what? You look like a star. But moving on then, his next fight is Ryan Garcia. This was the tune-up fight. And mm-hmm. it, it came off pretty well. He got a bit of ring rust off, whatever you want to say. Ryan Garcia is not taking one. He's going straight into this. Um, we talked about how 2023, we want to see certain fights happen. Was this one of the fights that was on your list? And now that it's happening, it looks like it's going to happen in the middle of April. Um, how do you see it playing out? Because Garcia will come in this fight. He's about 5'11", 5'10", 5'11". So he's, give, he's give, Tank's giving up about six, five inches, I want to say, about five inches, five and a half inches. So, And skill set-wise, Ryan Garcia is arguably one of the better fighters he's going he's gonna to fight. Um is it going to be a bit too much for Tank, or do you think his power can outshine Garcia in this one? It'll be interesting because with Ryan Garcia, I think all the physical capabilities are there, but you just never know what you're going to get from him. In this last fight, he didn't look as impressive at 140, and it was just kind of like, and you went in there with someone that was meant to make you shine. The opposite of that, though, you can say that he finally got a lot of minutes in from, you know, just being inactive. A lot of people would have thought it would suit him better to get, you know, a tune-up fight in himself. Just one, get your name out there commercial-wise. And two, just to get some ring rust off. But he seems to think that uh, other... Some people might see uh, see it as he's just looking to cash out ASAP. Whether win or lose, he might just be, like, looking to cash out. If he gets through tank, then he can just be like, all right, cool. He'll start calling out probably Devin Haney or someone, and they'll be like, brilliant, let's get this big fight. And then if he gets that fight with Devin Haney, then he can, and if he loses that, then he can cash out and just be like, it's been real. I just don't feel like he's here for the long term. And listen, kudos to him, man. If you're not here for the long term, cash out now and just be done with it because this ain't a sport to be lingering around. Even though I don't like how he's been um, chant, a lot of people have been chanting rubbish to read his prog- um, progress, Ruguru. That's a dangerous man. Leave that man alone unless you're prepared to die in that ring, man. That guy is a killer. But yeah, as for Tank and Garcia, it'll be an interesting fight. I think it's going to be who can impose their will more. And right now, the momentum's in Tank's court only because he's got the ring rust off. He's looking sharp. Now it just comes down to keeping his personal life in check enough because I know Ryan Garcia is going to bring that to right him. Oh, yeah, 100%. The press co- I think the press conferences, the build-up itself, once we get that final six weeks to a month out will be fun. But one quick question I'm going to ask you is, what do you think they're going to charge short time for pay-per-view? Oh, it's, it's listen, arm and a leg, man. <laughs> arm and a leg in this economy right now, which is crazy because America's already bad as it is with the whole like pay per view model, is already terrible because they charge like some stupid fights as pay per view, let alone this one. That's why at least people can say what they want about the zones, but at least with their pay per view model you can look at the zone and be like, okay, they've only done pay-per-view for Canelo. That's worth pay-per-view. He's a pay-per-view star. That's justified. Yes, I know. They're now, they've now rigged it where they have K- any KSI fight. I know it's well, a different, different audience, but they charge them on pay-per-view. Every the only week. reason I don't hate on that is because those fans that are buying those pay-per-view aren't going to be watching the zone. Mm, and they were paying and they were paying pay-per-view prior to joining the, it's different if it's like they joined the zone and then the zone was just like all oh, right you guys have to pay pay-per-view that's like yeah that's a piss take but from what i remember they were doing pay-per-view on youtube they done pay-per-view when it was on when matchroom hosted on sky sports and so now to continue as pay-per-view i get it because those fans that are watching I, 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 realistically i know i know this might hit a lot of people but Having KSI that misfit, he's arguably the third or fourth biggest star on the DAZN boxing platform. You, you can take Joshua and Canelo, but if you look at a following, you look at what at numbers we're bringing, arguably he could be on there. You're right. You are 
as brazy as that sounds, you are absolutely right. I can't think, yeah. He is the third biggest star in the zone. Who would have thought it when they launched? That is, you know, because... Because, yeah, even, even Triple G can't chat to him. I don't even know if Triple G still has a contract with the zone, but, yeah, you're right. But, listen, man, I hear it. I can't lie. That Misfit whole series, shout out them for what they're doing. I, I don't like blame them. Away. Like, it's, it's on. Yeah, your... it's their own thing. I, I can't blame them for being pay-per-view. And another side, side note as well, I know we take a lot of side routes on our main road, but people need to stop blaming Eddie Hearn for that. People no. need to distinguish between the zone and match room. That's all the zone, not match room. But let's go back to as for uh, to go back onto the main road with Tank and Garcia. From what I understand, it's going to be pay per view on Showtime, pay per view on the zone, but still Showtime production. So what's going to be interesting to me is how much will the zone charge for the service? Because mm. for me. If the zone try to charge the same as they charge Showtime, that's a piss take. So I would like to hope that they don't. Well, at least in America, obviously our pay per view pay per view charges are what twenty something pounds. Only to twenty twenty eight pound. Twenty. It's, it's it's rising up to thirty. The thirty yeah. is going to be touched in a probably when it's Fury versus Usyk. They're probably going to do thirty. Yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I think that can touch the or if if they do that in the first like quarter of the year, I think that that'll touch thirty. I think if Joshua yeah. Fury was to fight, that'll get thirty as well. Oh no, for sure, it's gonna annoy people, but at least for Usyk and Fury, I'll understand. Whereas America, they had stuff like Ortiz first Charles Martin for pay per view. They had Barrios first Furman for pay per. That is, and there's uh, one. Hit. There's one network that's doing that before we go in at a short time. But yes. an, <laughs> another another fighter that I want to mention on the card um, in the uh, in the welterweight division, Jerome Boots, and it's now the titles are all locked up. This this mm -hmm. is this is where he for me he's in a bit of a predicament. He won the interim what was it the interim welterweight title and yeah. the welterweight title, but all the belts are locked up with Spence and Crawford. I guess, I, I, like we were saying off air, I said that this is a fight that I'm happy that it is where it is because he's going to knock him out. We're going to get tanked quite early. And he went the 12 rounds. So I was a bit, <laughs> I was a bit surprised that, that let's say, that yeah. everyone was. Where, where is uh, Ennis's position in the welterweight division currently right now, do you think? Ennis needs to just take another fight that will help him tick over because, in all honesty, if Spence first Crawford doesn't happen by let's say, third quarter, let it go. Honestly, I don't, I don't even think that Spence will face Ennis. Mm -hmm. I think Spence will probably just let go of his belts and move up because, for me, it's not worth it at this point. If they don't do Crawford first Spence, I don't care about seeing Spence first Ennis. As crazy as that sounds, some people might be like, right, don't you want to see like, the old guard first, the new guard? I don't care at this point, man. Spence, go fight at 154. Ennis, go become a star at, you know, World to Weight. And Crawford, Crawford, I think, is going to stay at World to Weight. So then Crawford can go and face um, Ennis maybe down the line. Obviously, as well, those other big uh, World to Weight news. Virgil Ortiz first Danesis has been delayed because Danesis had a emergency medical procedure. So... Walterway is like all the belts have been locked up by Crawford and Spence, which is getting annoying now, but this is turning into hoarding. And it's just like, if you two don't face each other, please just drop all the belts. Or at least Spence anyway, because I think Crawford's going to stay at Walterway. So Spence, just drop the belts and go to 154, because I know he's been dying too. But I was going to say, as much as we want Undisputed, um, and we like the idea of Undisputed in, in divisions, especially when it's an actual marquee fight, is it a problem that it, all the belts only belong to two people and then the rest of the division is just fighting within each other and not being able to push on to the next step when they might be yeah. at that level to go? I don't think it's an issue. It's the, only, the biggest issue is that they're not facing each other because in all honesty, the fight one should have happened last year and two... 
who win or lose after that fight, as long as it's not controversial and there's no rematch, I know Spence is going to go to 154 because he's been saying himself, he's been killing himself making the welterweight limit this whole time. He's a big, he's a very big boy. And I think, I've always said this in previous pods as well, I think he goes up to 154, you is know, it- Jamel Charlo go, yeah, it's like sequence, Jamel Charlo, who's in the same camp, goes to 160 and then Big Charlo goes to 168. Obviously, they're spanner into the works because Jamel Charlo got injured. So now he's on the sideline. I think broken hand. So now he's on the sideline waiting to get that healed. I think he just wants to get one defense of the super welterweight title or light middleweight, whatever you want to call it. I think he wants to get one defense and then he was probably going to move up. Now, unfortunately, that's delayed. So I think, yeah, it's just the PVC guys are just holding up the division, to be fair. Um, just one more thing then. We've got to finish on the comments on yes. this. A new man to PVC was Andrade, and you did say it in the middle of this, but I want to give it its own little segment that you don't want to see this Canelo fight. You don't want to see anything. Now, he did have a layoff for over a year, but he was he was in this fight, and I watched it from start to end, and mm. he came out aggressive. I was like, you know what? We can see this finish third or fourth round. And the referee actually doesn't, even though it wouldn't have affected the decision, he doesn't take a knockdown to consider Andrade yeah. he doesn't take that in. Um, and before this, I've seen him on podcasts, he's, he's calling out Charlo, he's calling out Benavides, he's calling out a lot of people. And the fights are there at 168. But based off just, I know it's just one performance, is it going to be a struggle for him to get certain fights or... Yes and no. I think the way he the way he looked now, he might be seen as food by the other 168 guys now. And he's still a decent enough name to just be like, you know what? Worst comes to worse. I'll take that fight now because the inactivity is starting to show his age is starting to creep up. And this has to be one of the craziest mismanages of a career that I've seen in a long time. I mean, the only positive is that at least from the sounds of it, he still got decently paid by Eddie Hearn when he was part of Matchroom. But even at Matchroom, it's just like they tried to make the Billy Joe fight. That fell through. He never got, he never defended his belt against any credible person. When it was the time to take the Janabek fight, he relinquished the belts and then he was meant to find the front wrong card. He got injured. Then, obviously, unfortunately for him, after the injury, they tried to remake that fight and then the pay was going to be lower. So understandably, he left. He's just in no man's land and is is a combination of bad luck and mismanagement on his part. Because obviously, I think he was meant to face Big Charlo a while ago at 160. I think he made him go for a whole camp and then he dropped out. And then I think after that, both Charlo brothers were just like, don't ever ask us for a fight again. He's just a weird guy. I think the only problem, this is what I look at. So for if I'm an outsider looking in, if you say to me, Demetrius Andrade, I remember him as a meme because of the Get Canelo. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's what I mean. Horrible, so, horrible fighter. That's what I mean. So in, in reality, as much as he's four and he's been world champion and stuff like that, yeah. he's known outside of potentially boxing fans as a meme because that's what a lot of people remember for. He's like, He's yeah. the guy that was just embarrassed when you tried to ask him for a fight, and they're not wrong in a way. Oh man, I don't. Andrade is just a weird, awkward character. That's the best way to call him awkward. Like, did you? I don't know if you ever saw when he done a short video like late last year calling out Chris Eubank, and I'm just like, has this guy just like come off from drinking or something? <laughs> He's like in the dark. He's like he just told his cameraman, "Yo, hold this real quick." And then he puts out the most awkward promo to call out the UK promo king right now, Chris Eubank Jr. And it's just and just for, for a weight division that he's now moving up in. Like he's I don't know what he wants for himself. At this point, he should have might he might as well have stayed with Matchroom, then got the payday, run his contract out. And I don't know what's what's gonna happen with him now. Because you know as what? bad as Big Charlo has been looking, he probably watched that fight yesterday thinking. Easy I can one. take him out. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. 
But we are going to wrap up to this episode. The first one back of the new year. We still have another little... We still have a big UK fight coming up. Like I said, the king of promos, Chris Eubank Jr. fights Liam Smith in a couple of Come weeks' on, time. And I'll be looking forward to that uh, for a lot of reasons. But I think because one, one you're just going to see a lot more of a positive reaction to Chris Eubank Jr. I think based on what's yeah. on a bend. Um, but before we wrap up, any last words, uh, Ray? Listen, man, wishing everyone watching this and you two have us a good new year ahead. Stay blessed, stay ready, stay weighed in. I feel the sentiments as well. As always, guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Drop a like, share, subscribe, and as Ray said, stay weighed in.